While some companies are struggling just to compete and survive, Blue Eddy continues to thrive and innovate. They've done something no other company has done before. They're releasing the world's first sodium ion portable power station, the Blue Eddy Pioneer NA. And I've been testing this unit for several weeks, and I can confidently say this. This is the best efficiency that I've ever tested in any power station on the AC and DC side. It has the fastest recharge speed in its class, and this just might be the first real glimpse of the post-lithium battery area. Let's break it down. Sodium versus lithium, what you need to know. Sodium ion is not just another battery chemistry, it's a fundamentally different approach. And it has a higher power density than lithium, Sodium ion discharges faster and recharges more aggressively, and it can go down to 0% without damaging the pack. Notice that I did not say energy density. More on that in a moment. It's less prone to thermal runaway, lower fire risk, and inherently more stable under stress. And the standout feature is that lithium needs battery heaters or it loses capacity in freezing conditions or even overall functionality but sodium ion keeps the output even at negative 25 Celsius, which is a negative 13 Fahrenheit for us people here in the US. I wanted to push the Blue Eddy Pioneer NA to the extreme, so I ran a cold climate test that meant simulating temperatures as low as negative 12 Fahrenheit. So I placed the power station inside of a freezer for over 36 hours to make sure that the entire unit was ice cold. Once it stabilized, I discharged the unit at its maximum output to see if it could perform as well as it did in a controlled room temperature test at 72 Fahrenheit. It handled it with full load without a hiccup. But I didn't stop there. I charged the Pioneer NA at its maximum rate while it was still in the freezer at sub-zero temps. The CODIS reading I captured was negative 12 Fahrenheit. And through all of it, the unit performed flawlessly. I don't recommend anyone to try this at home. All of my tests are carefully controlled and closely monitored, but it does show how tough the Pioneer NA really is in extreme conditions. And it's not all positive because there are disadvantages. Probably the most popular one you'll hear people talk about is energy density. These battery packs are gonna be bulkier and heavier compared to LFP for the same amount of capacity. In the past, life cycle was traditionally lower, but with Blue Eddy's implementation, this is delivering 4,000 plus cycles, already on par with most LFP power stations that are on the market. This technology and sodium ion and their life cycles has taken a big leap forward over the last six months. This is advancing much quicker than we ever seen lithium advance in the past. Although this technology is not really new, it's still new at large scale manufacturing and long-term data is still limited. The bottom line is that sodium isn't replacing lithium everywhere just yet, but for portable power stations and stationary storage and cold weather applications, this is looking very promising. Blue Eddy has positioned the Pioneer NA as the launch platform for sodium ion in consumer products. Now let's talk about the technical specifications of the Pioneer NA. The battery capacity has a 900 watt hour sodium battery pack. The inverter is 1500 watts of continuous output up to 2250 watts in power lifting mode. The cycle life is 4,000 plus cycles, which gives you around 10 years of daily use. You can fast charge this very impressively. The fast charge can support up to 1,900 watts with dual input from solar and AC. You can go from zero to 80% in 35 minutes. The temperature operating ranges for charging will be a negative 15 Celsius, which is five Fahrenheit, and discharging as low as negative 25 Celsius or 13 or negative 13 Fahrenheit with no additional battery heaters. The standby power loss is just 1.5 watts, which is ultra efficient for storage. With the AC power turned on and standby consumption, this is a very respectful nine watts that it consumes with those turned on. Now, if you have the DC and AC and everything turned on like I have right here, 
it's still 10 watts or less. So this is a very efficient portable power station. It weighs in at 34.8 pounds, and I was expecting to be a little bit heavier. The overall dimensions are roughly 13 inches wide, 13 inches tall, and nine and a half inches deep. It has a total of 11 outputs, four 120 volt AC plugs, one 100 watt USB-C, four USB-A ports, one 12 volt car port, and wireless charging pad on the top. And a input for the solar which is a barrel connector, a 7909, and they provide an adapter that you can plug directly into MC4 cables. So it makes it flexible for different types of panels that you can use on your Pioneer NA. You can connect this to the Blue Eddy app via Bluetooth control. There is no Wi-Fi, but the firmware updates seamlessly and you can control the app as long as you're within distance of the Bluetooth. Again, there is no Wi-Fi to this device some people are going to love that. Some people are not going to like that so much. But one thing's for certain, this isn't a proof of concept. It's a full future, real world portable power station that competes with any other power station in its class. And that leads us right in to performance testing. In my test where I do an AC discharge, I squeezed out 854 watt hours of the 900 watt hours of capacity, giving us an unheard of 94.8% efficiency. For reference, 85% is considered good. 90% is considered stellar. 94.8 is the highest I have ever recorded on any portable power station by far. And then on the DC side, I pulled 798.7 watt hours at, for a 88.7 efficiency, again, the best DC performance that I've tested on any power station as well. And for cold weather operation, at a negative 13 Fahrenheit or a negative 25 Celsius, it continues to perform without any additional heating options, something that LFP portable power stations or just batteries in general cannot do without additional heaters to protect the cells. Now recharging this is super impressive because if you have AC and solar dual input, you can go from zero to 80% in 35 minutes with a total of 1900 watts of max input. So there's an advantage to that sodium ion where you can charge faster as well. So if we talk about just AC charging, it's very impressive for a portable power station of this size with a max input of 1400 watts of AC input to get this thing charged up very quickly. And although the noise levels are a little bit louder than what we're used to from Blue Eddy devices, at full AC input at 1400 watts of turbo charging, the fan noise topped out at 49.9 decibels, which is still quieter than a normal conversation. And I did measure the airflow at 4.08 meters per second at the fan inlet and 3.96 meters per second at the outlet. That's probably explaining why it stays so cool and we have that 49.9 decimals of sound because those fans are pushing a lot of air. And the last thing that you'd want from a portable power station is the lack of thermal control. You don't wanna heat up the internal components. So I don't mind if these fans are running just a tad bit louder than what we're used to in some of these uh, Blue Eddy products, still yet. I know I might be making a little bit bigger deal of this than what it should be, but it's still very quiet. And if you're not pushing this to the extreme test that I do, you don't really hear this uh, operating whatsoever. But I do wanna point out that not all of these portable power stations are created equally. Blue Eddy does an absolutely fantastic job of keeping them quiet and protecting the internals from heating up. And moving into some of those stress tests that I do, that's a little bit more extreme than what most people will ever use this at, is that I do a continuous discharge at close to the maximum power output of the rated inverter, which is 1500 watts on this power station, and it completed that successfully with no issues. And I almost always run a safety test of some sort, whether it's a short or it's an overload protection test. This one I did an overload protection test and it cleanly shut off at 2,099 watts of output. So we're rated at 1,500 watts. It surged up to 2,099 that was on the display screen. That could be off a little bit here and there, but 
it did surge and then it recognized that and shut off properly to protect the system and the devices that it was powering. And to dive a little bit deeper, the waveform tested perfectly clean on the pure sine wave inverter, showing that Blue Eddy optimized the inverter for sodium ion without compromise. Let's discuss safety in a little bit more detail. With sodium ion cells, inherently, they're gonna be more stable than lithium. Blue Eddy has also manufactured the Blue Topaz AIBMS, which provides real-time monitoring of voltage, current, and temperature, and offers multi-layer protection, such as over voltage, short circuit, reverse polarity, and leakage detection. Blue Eddy's mission is to make clean, independent energy practical for everyone. This is a big step forward in that overall mission. The Blue Eddy Pioneer NA is more than just a power station. It's proof that sodium ion is ready for prime time. It's got high efficiency, the highest that I've ever tested at 94.8% on the AC side and 88.7% on the DC side. It has the fastest recharge speed in its class. It's quiet and well cooled, even at turbo charge. The cold weather is a game changer at a negative 25 Celsius or a negative 14 Fahrenheit. It's safe, reliable, and built to last for at least 10 years of daily use. Yes, it's heavier than the LFP unit of the same size, and it lacks Wi-Fi, but the trade-offs are definitely worth it. Safety, sustainability, recharge performance, and groundbreaking efficiency. If you want to be on the cutting edge of energy storage, this is where the future begins. The Blue Eddy Pioneer NA, the first sodium ion portable power station and the one that sets the standard. If you found this review helpful, smash the thumbs up button. It lets me know that I did a good job. Consider subscribing to the channel and drop a comment below. I'll also be releasing a deep dive on a video uh, between sodium ion and lithium ion for those of you that want the hardcore technical breakdown. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in my next one.